And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, June 20th, 2021. Uh, first of all, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there who may be checking in with us today. Hope you all had a very good day. Now, on to the NASDAQ. The market did decline after hitting an additional slight new high uh, last Friday. The new high came in within the Globex session. But that new high was at 14,204.75. And then it began to sell off, kind of sat and did nothing until we got around to, be, to opening. And then it just basically gave us a good decline start. And it's kind of like kaboom, kaboom. And then rallied, but kind of was held tight. It had its moments. And this is a 30 minute chart. It had its moments, but it held to this fit and start type of a mode. And that fit because it was quadruple expiration. Expirations can tend to be quiet. They don't necessarily have to be explosive. They can force a move every now and then simply because somebody needs to move in and do something on the larger side. But still, it's in uh, fits and starts, let's say. Um, and then the market continues to go lower today. Now, what we were counting is leaving the four here. That the start of this minor fifth wave, which is going to complete the minor fifth, complete the minor fifth, complete the intermediate fifth, which is going to complete the primary fifth. So we've got a lot of tops coming. If not, they're already in. But I'm still going on the premise that we have more highs to put in before all is said and done. So what happens on Friday and how does that relate to our very near term picture, which includes, I'd say, tomorrow and Tuesday? So what I was originally believing that this finished wave four and came up here, and there's where wave one completed. So that'd be a 40. 14,030.75. Then we got a wave two. Then we start to build on wave three. And that goes one, two, one, two. And it actually backs up here. One, two, one. So that's the one, two. And now we're breaking the third. One, two, one, two, three, four, five of three four, five of three, right? Because the third subdivide in and of itself. So everything's covered. And then we would be expecting a smaller fourth wave. Remember the golden rule, fourth wave cannot overlap the finishing point of wave one. It can't, can't overlap the top of wave one. Wave one came up to 14,030. 0.75. We're already trading below. We've broken below it on Friday and we're breaking below it again in Globex. So it's not a fourth wave. So what else could it be? One thought process is, is that this is wave A of four. This is wave B of four. And we're now going to come down in a C wave. Now, what could that look like? Well, well, let's just change this around a little bit and put some parameters around that, if indeed that's what it's going to be. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to there. Please. Okay. And then we're going to come up to here. Yeah. A little, little bit above. Okay. So right now we're kind of honing in on the 0.618, and that's where this, this C wave would be 0.618 going to the A wave. Now that doesn't really jive. <clears throat> it's too big of a failure. And this C wave needs to at least come down to here. Well, now we go back and look and say, well, 100%, mm, maybe it's going to stop at 13,879. We still are looking for it to come to 13,830 or below. So the next one down is the 1.236 times the electric wave A. Now, if this indeed was an irregular B wave, right? Because that was the previous high, 14,155. We got up to 14,204, 
produces an irregular B wave because it creates a new high, we would be looking for that to come into 1.236 or 1.382 down to finish the move. So in essence, we have these, this zone down here, that would be the most likely spot based on the structure that we have in place for the market to bottom. And if it was to continue to go up, so if we move the four from there to here, and we get that again, send off rally, all the better. Because it just kind of puts a little bit of additional confirmation and support on how we are viewing this particular decline. Now, the flip side of that, folks, is that this completed everything. Minute five, minor five, intermediate five, primary three. Everything kind of fits in. It's a little bit sloppy, but I'll tell you, I can, I can make that work and cleanly. And that's not by jerry-rigging. Please don't misunderstand me. Um, I'm giving every benefit to every squiggle, to every line, to show me, for the market to show me. And the way that this would have ended, this is a triangle pattern at the top. It is three waves, three waves, three waves, all the way up to that top. We've talked about that. It's not uncommon in, in the very end of a large move or the very top of a large move. And in this case, this was a large move. And if we took it out in context, it's full of large moves all the way up, but it is very fitting for the level that it's completed. And if that's the case, I'm gonna be looking for this thing to pick up some speed and to quickly get down to here and not stop. Um, because I think it just forces the hands. Expiration's over, all that's, the books are done on expiration. Money is exchanged, hands positions are closed. So now it's a new ball game, but we still have the end of the month. And I don't, we don't know what these guys want to show on their books and what positions they want on and where they need to be. So we still have that for the next uh, 10 days. So until the 30th of June, we could get these massive upswings and downdrafts. So we still have to let the market tell us. So right now we could get a downdraft that's gonna take us into this area and that can happen overnight into tomorrow. If it holds, we're gonna keep alive the upside. If this finished here, then I'm looking for some nasty coming off. And it should easily get down to here. So I would think it's gonna pick up the speed because if we're counting five, we're going to move it back up to the hourly. I on, the, on the 30 minute, I can count five. And if this is one, two, and we're dropping into a three or three, I'm going to get, get out of that way. Because, it's, because everything that I talk about in terms of if you're getting a position and got all of you moving averages in alignment, that works going in both directions, folks. That's the major thing. It works going in both directions. So in essence, if this is going to fly up and now we're changing we're changing guard, we're not, we're shifting from bullish to bearish, and the market is gonna let us know that, by the way. So I'm not gonna make any preconceived calls here. The market's gonna let us know, and that is that it's gonna to start to fly down below this, because we're looking for, on the hourly, five waves down. And right now, I can't really count it. I can count three, clean three. One, two, three, four. And this is the fifth. So if anything, I'm looking for this to get below that low, which is still, come on, let's just sit there for a second, 14,010. So maybe a quick trip down below 14,000. And that really could take us all the way down to here. You want to go down and make that? Then I'm going to have a clearer expectation of what it is. But in truth, it could drop down to 13,975, finish this five on the hourly, then rally again back up into this area and then start that three of three. So you see, we've, we've got two situations and it's going to take some time to resolve them till we get a real clean picture and we can say, nope, highs are in, we're not going back up there or yep, lows are in for right now and we're going to work our way back up there. So we're in that in-between stage and we need more evidence and the only one that's going to be able to tell us is the market itself. So we are now looking at 
I would anticipate we're going to get at least a bit of additional downside. And that could park us into this zone right here. 13,975, 13,950, let's call it. And, and possibly we go drop all the way down to there. <clears throat> that still would fit. But I'm just looking for it to come down, create a new low, finish this first five down, which kind of does change some things. But we're still going to be allowing for upside and some other scenarios to come in. Because indeed, again, if this is going to drop in five in a C wave to get itself down to here, this might just be wave one, wave two, then we get three, four, five. And this could take maybe till the end of the week. I don't know. Again, we're letting the market tell us. But these are our potentials. This is what we got going on. And we're going to continue to use Fibonacci, the, the, the relationships between the waves in current scenarios. And we're going to be able to work Fibonacci and we're going to be able to work uh, moving averages to our advantages. And so we will be able to continue to trade what's in front of us. And this is what remains important. I mean, my hourly, this is a momentum stochastic, but it's saying, you know, momentum has been pretty strong to the downside does not mean we can't go further. It just is showing us that's where the momentum is and it's kind of zipping us into oversold. So again, how oversold it wants to get, got to wait for the market. But you start to think, well, we could start to turn. So maybe it will just be here. But I'm always prepared if it goes through, I know what to do. Again, these are the teaching moments. So please bear with me and it does tend to take me a little bit longer. But this is what I will be talking about in the trade room as well. And so if, if, you st if you've not received the email, get on my list so you can get on that email list. And because the trade room officially is gonna start tomorrow. The launch date is now been extended to July 1st. And we just have this pre-launch and really good pricing put together. I readjusted the pricing because I thought that was needed a little bit, a little bit better. And so, that second chance to kind of come in is still there. And I look forward to meeting everybody because I think they're really going to have some fun. The market is going to provide that fun for us. And so we just want to be along for the ride. So we have upside scenario, we have downside scenario. Right now I'm looking for the downside scenario to, uh, to complete first before we get that a little bit decent rally. Um, and again, we're going to trade that accordingly with our moving averages in line and, and et cetera, et cetera. And we'll work Fibonacci to the upside. So wherever this bottoms, once we get a signal that this short-term five is down, is finished, then we're gonna be looking for a wave two. And we can quickly put Fibonacci, you put retracements on the bottom where this goes to that top, and that's gonna give you retracements for the break way back up. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Folks, the next update will be Monday the 21st.